My name is William T. Harris. I am president and CEO of Space Center Houston. We're a science center focused on space exploration, uh, and we're also the official visitor center for NASA Johnson Space Center. Well, as a science-based institution, when we plan to reopen, because like everyone, we close down for a period of time, and in the case of Texas, our governor opened the state pretty promptly. We were one of the among the first states to begin opening up. Just at the time we were planning to reopen, we had a surge, a second wave in Texas. And so um, we discussed it thoroughly. And I took the position that, well, we represent NASA and NASA is all about risk management. And so um, we decided to plan to reopen in compliance with CDC guidelines. You know, the other thing I said to my team was, listen, we've had people living in the International Space Station, which is basically a very small compartment for 20 years. And they really are, have to know how to manage these because humans are vectors for all kinds of things. And so we applied that to our institution and really reconceptualized our guest experience. Uh, we have touchless turnstiles. Um, we augmented our visitor app. Um, we made major changes. We had one-way flow, social distancing, required masks. We um, have a popular tram tour that takes people behind the scenes at NASA Johnson Space Center. And we were allowed to continue a portion of that. And then of course we had to put in place all of the, the human resources practices and policies. So what happens if a staff member is diagnosed or what are our protocols for coming to work? So we put in place um, an app called Safety Pass where people self-declared. We wanted them more than anything else to read it and say, you feel sick, if you feel sick, stay home, don't come to work. Um, and you had to declare that. And then if you put in place a whole system of contact tracing, so similar procedures and practices with other organizations. Um, what I think was really extraordinary with this pandemic is uh, we've been learning as we go and we have been dealing with this on an extremely accelerated path. We are the number one tourist destination in the Houston region and we have, before the pandemic, 70% of our visitors were foreign and domestic tourists. And so people like staying connected with us through our website and other electronic mediums. So we're really looking at that how we could better integrate our experiences and provide, or present them in a more dynamic way through a digital strategy. We were at a point in developing it when the pandemic struck that it was our lifeblood. It really saved us because we had the bones of it in place and we were able to build on that and begin to provide content out to our stakeholders, both free and some fee-based. On the other side of the coin, it compelled the whole world to get more digitally engaged. So that was really the silver lining. This has been a very interesting journey and I don't think it's unique to us, but um, I'm very conscientious with my team around their experience and what they're going through. We're a bigger institution compared to many science centers. And um, we have about 240 full-time equivalent staff. And with my leadership team, we made the strategic decision that we were not going to lay off or furlough staff. And we were going to look at how we could constrain expenses and augment some of our alternative revenue sources to keep the institution moving forward. But most important, I wanted to be sure that my team maintained their health benefits um, and that they also psychologically felt knew that they had a job and would continue to be supported because eventually I knew we were going to emerge from this. So we were doing um, virtual all staff meetings at least monthly. They were more frequent in the beginning, about every three weeks just to keep them informed about where we were at as an institution, what our plans were, and reminding everyone of what the best practices were. I would do briefings around the status of COVID in our region, um, and just assure them too that it is a preventable disease. If you comply with the protocols, you can minimize your risk. You can't eliminate it 100%, but you can really minimize it. And that we all have that power and that responsibility. We also took the position that we needed to help the public understand this. So we curated our own exhibit called Mission Poland Control the Spread, where we collected information about how various NASA centers were doing research and helping to address the COVID-19 um, pandemic. One center developed a really low cost oxygen mask. Um, there was another um, center um, that actually came, there was someone there, a young engineer came up with a pendant that open, open source and you could print on a 3D printer that would ping every time you went to touch your face. We really tried to um, kind of humanize the disease 
um, and make it people understand kind of there are things around us all the time. There are all kinds of viruses. How do we keep ourselves well? When we first opened, I had to address an issue where the floor staff, the operations staff, were here and our administrative staff were working from home because they mostly have cubicles in their offices. And so there was a little bit of um, tension because the staff on site were like, wait, why are we putting ourselves at risk? And the administrative staff are at home and they're not at risk. And so we had to be really clear about that. We all have different jobs and different roles. We're all gonna have different levels of risk. And so to help address that, uh, we started having administrative staff come in on cycles to help on the floor, um, more for team spirit and team support. I really wanted to be sure there wasn't a perceived divide of you know, haves and have nots. It really has been a real journey. I feel like we've come out of it stronger as, as an institution uh, because we really focused on you know, taking care of our team and, and we do care and we've been really clear about all the things that we're doing. We're human and that we have a lot of factors and stresses and tensions in our lives. And you have to have that humanity in managing your team. You know, I, I feel that we are a community gathering place, a place where people come together, learn, and can be aspirational about the future. I was really fortunate to serve um, on uh, the, one of the realm committees for libraries and museums, um, looking at virus hunt services and um, it was phenomenal to be at the table and looking at the outcome of research and helping to kind of structure some of the components of that study. And it was so valuable to connect with colleagues um, and to be with colleagues who work in museums, but also colleagues in libraries who are we're related and we overlap in, in things that we do, but we are different professions. But there was such a rich discussion and exchange of ideas and I think there were lessons learned around how we both operate and things that we could learn from each other to improve our service to the public. It's not the last pandemic that's going to happen. And I think it's gonna be really important for us to document our process journey and lessons learned as we through this you know, pandemic together. Um, and so I hope that we'll be better, we'll be more, even more nimble and more effective in responding to COVID-20 or 21 or whatever the next uh, pandemic is that comes down the pipe. I think that uh, we now have opened up communication that hopefully will be of service not only to our professions, museums and libraries, but to others as well.